Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Todd Noop uh, in the Economics and Business Department. And today I want to share with you a couple of short videos that are associated with the quantitative reasoning exercise that we're all going to be working on and also associated with um, your readings for, from a letter to my son. And so uh, we want to talk about ratios, changes, and percent changes in this first video. But before I get to that, I want to say a couple of words here about what do we mean when we talk about quantitative reasoning, all right? Quantitative reasoning is more than just calculations. Quantitative reasoning is about understanding magnitudes. It's under, understanding the relative size of one variable relative to another. And it's about the ability to adjudge an answer that is ballpark correct versus one that is impossible, all right? And so quantitative reasoning is Yes, it is about calculations, but it's also about understanding intuition and how to get an approximately right answer quickly as opposed to an exact answer. So while the letter to my son, and you might have noticed this from your readings, doesn't really have any numbers associated with it, there's a number of very important intuitive concepts associated with quantitative reasoning that are very important to grasp in order to get a deeper understanding about what Coates is talking about in our reading. And so that's what we're gonna to try to, um, we're gonna to try to develop some of those quantitative reasoning skills here in these two short videos. First, let's talk about what a ratio is. A ratio is the quantitative relationship between two numbers. And really all a ratio is, is how many times one number goes into another number, all right? So it's a way to get the relative size of one number relative to a second number. Ratios have no units. Once again, it's just a number, a number of times that one goes into the other. So to calculate an example of, of calculating a, a ratio, um, I want to show you some data, and I'm going to be using this data for all of the little examples that I talk about here in these videos. This is data on the gap in wealth between upper income, middle income, and lower income families within the United States, right? So in this data, which is from the Pew Research Center, uh, upper income households are households that have income greater than two times the average US median income. I'm sorry, not median, average income. So if you have income that's twice the average, your upper income, if you have income that is less than two thirds of the average, you are lower income and everybody in the middle there, between two-thirds and two times average income, is in the middle class. And so here we can see some data from both 2016 and 2001 and 1983 about what the upper income, the wealth of upper income families, the wealth of middle income families, and the wealth of lower income families. So let's say that we were interested in calculating the ratio using 2016 data of the wealth of upper income families relative to the wealth of lower income families. So how would we do that? Well, let me share my screen with you here. So if we think about, oops, the wealth of upper income families, the ratio of the wealth of upper income families to the ratio to the, to the wealth of lower income families. This would be the wealth of upper income families divided by the wealth of lower income families. We saw on our data that the wealth of upper income families is 848,400. The wealth of lower income families was 11,300. If we use a calculator, we can see what the ratio is the ratio is about 75, right? So upper income households may have about 75 times the wealth as lower income households. This is from our data in 2016. What happens if we go back to 1983? Well, in 1983, we can calculate this same ratio. In 1983, upper income households had about $344,000 in wealth. Lower income households at a little bit over $12,000 in wealth, the ratio here is about 30. So we can see that there's been a big increase in the ratio of the wealth of upper income households relative to the wealth of lower income households. So that is a ratio. Next concept we wanna talk about 
is a change or sometimes just referred to as a difference. And a change or a difference is just the difference, right? It's the difference between the new observation and the old observation, right? Changes are always associated with units, right? So whether we're talking about changes in the number of people, changes in, in income, which would be expressed in changes in dollars, changes in, you know, a certain uh, sports statistic, right? There always has to be a unit associated with the change. So if we go back and look at our data here, we can calculate a change. Let's think back to our 2016 data, right? What would be the change in wealth for upper income households between 2016 and 1983, Oops. right? Well, what would the change be? It would simply be the difference, right? So the difference would be 848, 1,400. That's how rich these upper income households were in 2016. And then how rich they were in 1983, which is 344,100, right? So using our calculator or doing this by hand, hopefully, we see that the change in wealth of upper income households has been about $500,000. And we need to put a dollar sign there because the, there has to be units associated with this, right? Now let's talk about what a percent change is. And a percent change is really just using those two concepts of change and ratio, right? The problem with using only changes is that it gives no sense of the relative size, right? In the example that we just talked about, we talked about how the wealth of upper income households went up by $500,000. Is that a lot or a little? Well, one way to think about that is to express that as a ratio of the wealth of upper income households, right? And that's what a percent change is. A percent change is a change expressed as a ratio of the beginning value, right? And typically we multiply this then by 100 to put it, to make it a percent, right? So percent changes are actually able to give us a sense of the relative change in a variable, the relative increase or the relative decrease in a variable over time. So let's think about how using this example of upper income and lower income wealth and figure out what the percentage change in the wealth of these two groups was between 2016 and 20, or in 1983, right? So, share my screen with you once again. Here, we wanna calculate Sorry, still trying to figure out this thing a little bit. Here we want to calculate the percent change in the wealth of upper income households between 2016 and 1983. How do we do that? We have to figure out what the new value of wealth is, divide by the old value of wealth, and then we always divide by the old value or the original value right? Because we want to express this relative to where we begin, not to where we end. And then we have to multiply that by 100. That's the way that we figure out the percent change in wealth. So what's our new value? In other words, what is wealth in 2016? It's once again, 848,400. What was wealth in 1983? That and we divide by wealth in 1983, oops, reflecting the fact that we always do this relative to where we begin, not to where we end, right? And then we multiply that by 100 to make it a percent. And what's the answer? Using a calculator, we can quickly find that this is 146.6%, right? So that is a huge change in wealth, right? We know that. Because once again, percentage change is, is a, gives us a sense of the relative magnitude, right? Not just the change, but the relative change in this variable. What's true for lower income households? 
What's the percent change in lower income households between 2016 and 1983? Once again, it would be the new observation minus the old divided by the old times 100. So wealth in 2016 is 11,300. Wealth in, I'm sorry, yeah. Wealth in uh, 1983 is 12,300 divided by 12,300. Once again, where we begin, not where we end. And what do we find? That the wealth, the percent change in wealth of lower income households was negative 8.1%, right? Once again, I want to reemphasize here that the key to calculating percent changes is you always want to express it relative to your beginning value or your old value, not relative to where you end up, right? Because you always have to start from where you start. You don't want to start from where you began or where you ended, if that makes any sense. So anyway, ratios, changes, and percent changes, right? That's the first video that will help you with your quantitative reasoning worksheet. Um, second video hopefully in a moment.